All right. All right, cool. How's everyone going? Doing? I, I want to go, but see. Happy Monday. Oh, I'm great. <laughs> So I am super excited to be with you guys today. We are going to be talking about um, something I know a lot of you have interest in, which is how to build a portfolio. <laughs> Jennifer and I are both sharing an office right now, <laughs> and our class just crossed. Um, anyway, so um, I'm going to do a quick little screen share here. And all right, there we go. Very cool. Okay, so this is a presentation that I had done um, a few months back at a mastermind that I was inv invited to. It's a wealth building mastermind, and um, our good friend Brad Hart had um, asked me to come in and speak on the subject of building long term wealth through real estate. And so I was like, well, sure, no problem, I can do that. And so this presentation I put together is something, the beginning of it is something I've actually done in this group before. So I'm going to go through that really quickly to really get down to talking a little bit more about the portfolio part. And what I had said earlier was uh, what we did is we took the Burr strategy, the Burr being buy, rehab, rent, and refinance. And we ended up putting a little bit of a spin on it in order to create a portfolio. Now, when I talk about this, this is going to be a portfolio of 10 units. The reason I'm using this as an example, as opposed to here, let me tell you about the hundred, the hundred properties that we've done is because a lot of you in the group are new. And so what I found, at least when I was new and it's been like 16 years, but when I was new, it was really difficult for me to see people who had done a hundred properties and be able to see myself there without seeing like some of the smaller steps. So what I'm going to show you is just we've been doing this for a long time and have done hundreds of properties. What I'm going to do is I'm going to insulate one little group that we recently did because it ended up being, we were working on one strategy. We ended up making a decision partway through the project that we could be better served by changing our strategy a little bit and basically creating a portfolio out of a group of properties we were working on. So that's what I would really want to share with you guys today. So let's go through get this party started all right so uh, a lot of you guys already know this but just the foundation of this so benefits of owning real estate right you have cash flow we have mortgage pay down uh, we have appreciation right properties go up in value we get depreciation expense which is not even a real expense yet we get to write it off our taxes which just helps us pay less tax um, we have the ability to leverage which means you can take the same amount of money call it fifteen fifteen thousand dollars and you can go buy $15,000 of stocks, or you can take $15,000 and go buy a piece of real estate that has a much higher value because you can get a loan, all right? So that's leverage, and then the forced appreciation, which is really what I'm gonna focus on with you guys today. And forced appreciation is essentially when you take uh, an underperforming asset and you fix it up, and you, it's, you're not waiting for the market to go up, you're creating the higher value because of the renovation that you do. And that is something that Jennifer and I are just specialists in. It's, it's the only thing that we ever do. We don't buy properties that are already performing. And not that we would never do it, just we know how to do this other strategy and we make so much more money that that's a better fit for us. So that's really where we, we shine is how to create cash flow in a way that creates a lot of equity um, and just a lot of value, not only for you, but for the community and for the people involved. So that's what we're excited to, to show you. And of course, you know, this benefits us and our family and, and that's the portfolio part of it. But man, this, this strategy is really fun once you get it going. All right. So I'm going to roll through this a little bit. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about from the leverage standpoint, specifically with a rental property. So let's say that we had $15,000, like I mentioned before. And, um, Let's say I was taking a $120,000 property and I was gonna put down 10%, that's $12,000, right? Let's say I put another $3,000 in there for closing costs. I could buy with that same $15,000, a $120,000 piece of real estate, right? That's where the leverage part really comes in. All right, now, the good stuff. The forced, forced appreciation. All right, so the first strategy is you're buying the property, you're renovating it, right? This is obviously the before the renovation. This particular house we paid a little bit less than $30,000 for. And like nobody want, had been on the market for a while. Nobody wanted it even at that price because it was just ugh. this ugly, horrible, disgusting property. 
But what we saw was it was in an area of town where the area of town wasn't that great, but there had been um, gentrification both to the east and to the west of it. And so we thought, well, if we fix it up, first of all, it's, it's going to cash flow well. But if the area happens to also gentrify, since it's in the middle of two areas that have, we're really going to have a nice appreciation on it. So we don't buy properties with the expectation that they're going to appreciate, but we do pay attention to the location that we're buying in. Because if I'm going to spend money here or here, I'd rather spend money in the place that at least stands a chance of the value going up. All right. So that's one of the strategies that we employ when we're picking which properties to write offers on or which ones are not in the areas that are already gentrifying or gentrified because those prices are a lot higher, but which ones are close to those areas and do they work for cash flow? So even if it never appreciated, would it still work? All right. Um, all right. So this is the property, which is nasty, 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 gross property. Nobody would ever step foot in it, no less live in it. All right, so we, we spent about $40,000 renovating it, and then when we were done, it looked like this. Now, someone driving down the street, when they're looking at that, they're like, ooh, keep driving. When they're looking at that, they're like, oh, okay. So as soon as we put up a for rent sign, we had a lot of interest. The other thing that I do, and um, this is something I always share with my coaching students. When, they, when I'm walking them through the process of their first deal, and they're, they're at the point where the renovation is getting close to being done, my next step for them is, hey, go get a professional photographer. And I teach them how to do it because they're never working in their home market. They're always working remotely. So I teach them how to do that. Go find a professional photographer. And as soon as the renovation is done, I will have them go send the professional photographer in and take pictures, which is what we do on every single house that we do. And the nice thing about that, like what that allows us to do, not only for this time when we're getting ready to rent it out, like it lets us showcase the property like our property online looks 10 times nicer than other properties. And the other properties might be renovated just the same as ours. But the fact that it's a professional photographer and it's not that much money, like they use lighting and they do not stage it with furniture, but they stage the picture in such a way that it brings out the best in the house. So that's one thing we rarely have any uh, lapse in time where we don't have a tenant in there. And it's because of the online marketing that we do. All right, so professional photography is a big one. Down the line, when you are um, getting ready, let's say the tenant, the lease is up, the tenant's moving out, you're ready to re-rent it, you can use those same photographs. So we've had this property for a couple of years. Now when we're on one unit, we're on our second tenant, the other one we're on our third tenant, or we're going to be because our lease is coming up. Um, I'm just using those same photographs. I already know my property management company is going to put it back into the same condition. So I'm not worried about advertising it this way, but I get a lot more people applying or indicating interest when I can show something nice. So that's something that I think a lot of investors miss out on. And it's because they're worried about spending the money, spend the money. Trust me, even having, you know, a week less vacancy one time pays for more than pays for it. All right. So, and this is, you know, this is the after. All right. So you guys understand we're talking about renovating, putting the house back on the market. All right, so let's just talk about numbers for a minute. So this particular house we bought for $29,750. And I told you guys earlier when I had made the post about doing this, that I was going to tell you like our real numbers. I'm not going to go through every single property, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through uh, a duplex and a single family home because what we ended up doing was combining into a portfolio, a couple of single families with a couple of duplexes. But I'm going to explain to you kind of what led us to to do that so real numbers so we bought it for thirty thousand. we put 45 into it and other costs are like closing costs holding costs etc so our all-in costs were just under eighty one thousand. all right and when we got it appraised in january of last year it was worth one hundred and thirty one thousand. okay that was the after renovation value so through the process of us buying this ugly property and understand like jennifer and i don't go and step foot into any of those properties. Like we live in San Diego, we've got four kids. The last thing that we have time to do is fly cross country to Indianapolis, which is where this one happens to be, and go walk around in a property, right? We build teams for that. Like everything that we do, we do from sitting right here in our chair with our cell phone and our computer. And I'm not saying that it's easy, it's not easy, but it's not physical and it doesn't require the time that sometimes people think 
like, oh, I'm going to have to fly there. No, you absolutely don't. What you need to learn how to do is build a team. All right. So we leverage our team, our realtor, our home inspector, our contractor, our property manager, our real estate agent, the title company, and we know how to direct all of them. So that at the end of the day, what we have is that, that gorgeous property. And, and that we have is rents coming in because of a property manager in place who is showing it, screening the tenants, and then ultimately filling the property for us. So out of that, that little project, and this one we bought in, I don't know what this one was, October, October, 2017, like at the end of October. I remember this one specifically because the lender that was going to lend on it, the hard money lender, um, it was at the time that there was a hurricane. We were supposed to close in like the first week of September and there was a hurricane in Florida and it hit them. They were in Orlando. It literally hit them. It shut their office down for like two weeks. So we ended up closing at the end of September. So I don't usually know all the dates of our properties, but this one I do. Um, anyway, so we bought it in the, towards the end of September. We started the renovation like as soon as we closed. So my contractor was like, okay, I'm ready to go, thinking we were going to close earlier. Um, they knocked it out in eight weeks. I was hoping for six, but they knocked it out in eight weeks. So by the end of November, we had our professional photography done and we were already showing the property and we had tenants in there by the 10th and the 15th of December. This is a duplex. Okay. So we had two different tenants, 10th and 15th of December. All right. So this one got filled. So at the time we had originally projected that the rents would be $600 a month on this property based on the area, what we thought, um, and talking to some property managers and stuff. So we based it on 600, but I was like, well, if we can get any more, if we can make it a really nice rehab, maybe we can get more. Well, we ended up getting $1,500 a month, 750 each side. And now we have tenants and they're paying 820 and 795. So even since we first rented it, we've been able to increase the rents and the area still hasn't like gentrified, but what it is, is it's, it's on this path that goes right into downtown. So we have a good proximity to downtown and that has allowed us to just steadily increase the rents, um, you know, every year, which has been cool. All right. So, but I'm going to give you the numbers that it was when we did it. All right. So our rent was 1500, the expenses of the property was 403. Now, if you guys were on the, um, the teleclass or the masterclass where I talked about financial analysis, then this will be familiar. As far as expenses, what we're talking about is property taxes, insurance, maintenance, property management. Okay, the one expense that, that we sometimes talk about that's not an expense for the purpose of um, doing a cash flow analysis is the debt service, which is another way of saying the mortgage payment. Okay, so in this particular property, our net operating income, so our rents minus expenses were around $1,100, and we had a $550 a month debt service payment on it, All right? So our cash flow ended up being about $547 a month, which came out to be $6,500 annually. All right, right, no, nothing that's gonna like change your life, but if you're brand new in real estate, like that's an amazing way to start, okay? And that's the big thing. And I'm going to show you how we build this into portfolio. But the biggest thing I want, to, I want you guys to take out of this, if you're, especially if you're new, don't worry about where you should be. Where you should be is where you are. Your, your next step is just the first step. Just get your first one. Because once you get your first one, you have your team in place. You know how to do it. You're not completely lost in like, how, how does this all come together anymore, right? And especially like if you're in, our, you're in our coaching program or you're working with us in our group coaching or one-on-one, -on -one, like we've taken you through the whole process, held your hand during it, you've closed your property. Well, no one can ever take that knowledge away from you. Now you just do it over and over and over. So it's just the most important thing to just get through your first one and take it off your list of things to do because it creates a momentum and then you're proud of yourself and you're excited and you're confident. And now it's time to do the next one. All right. So anyway, so that's the cash flow on one of the duplexes. So we'll call, we'll say that the, the rest of the duplexes were similar. Um, one was we bought it for 43,000 and put 50 into it. Another one we bought for 50,000 and we put like 23 into it. Another one was 55,000 and we put 20 into it. So that kind of gives you an idea. So, we, there, so this little package was four duplexes. All right. Four duplexes and we were in the process oh yes and the other thing we did is we took a couple of single family homes so we were in the process of doing flips so we do both flips and rentals and our our preference is for long-term cash flow but we've been 
I was a trainer for a national real estate company for five years and the main focus was flipping. And so to stay relevant in that, we would do probably more flips than we would otherwise do. Uh, but we were in the process of doing a bunch of flips in this one area. And what we were seeing with our duplexes is, you know, the values of them were fairly low compared to how much the rents were. And Jen, it's so funny because Jennifer and I will laugh about the path because the past, because when we were, you know, first building this business model, she was always like, oh, I don't want to be doing it flipping on my like, cash flow, cash flow, cash flow, cash flow. And I was like, oh yeah, but the numbers don't really work. You can't really do the single family home and cash flow it. It's very hard to refinance because the rents aren't high enough, right? So that was always my pushback was like, ah, they don't really work for the single family. So we're in the process of doing like all of these, uh, these renovations, right? We had the four duplexes going on and those are starting to come about and they were now performing. And we have like six flips going on. I know it was seven, seven, eight. We had eight flips going on at one time, um, but six were in this one area and then two were in other markets. <laughs> Jennifer's back there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Apparently I take on too much. So <laughs> anyway, so we had, um, we had these six flips going on. And um, during that process, as we had our rental properties that were up and running performing, Jennifer again was like, I really wish we did not have to sell all these single family homes. This area is like, it is up and coming. The values are clearly going up. I was like, yeah, but they don't work. And then she asked a question one day that just literally shifted our entire business model for this little portfolio and created this like beautiful thing. She's our strategist. So I, I give her credit for, uh, for asking this really freaking brilliant question. And the question was, I wonder if there is such a thing as could we combine a couple of single family homes with our cash flow monsters, right? Cause they cash flowed really well. Could we combine them together and have like, it would almost be like the lender would treat it like an apartment, right? They give one loan because there's these, you know, 10 units. And I was like, I, I think they're, you know, a blanket more. I had just never done it before. I'm like, yeah, I think there's like a blanket mortgage. I haven't looked into it in 10 years. You know, let me, uh, I don't know, let me do some digging around. All right. So let me walk you through the numbers a little bit on this and then show you what we ended up doing. This was a house that was just, man, it was just, it was just so bad. It was so ugly. Most of the houses that we buy are built like in the 1900s. So they're really, really old, um, but they've got good bones, right? So this is, <laughs> this is a fun one before, after. All right, we made it into a gorgeous home. Now, originally we were thinking we were gonna flip it, but when she asked that question, I was like, I don't know. We started looking at our options, all right? And we started calling around and talking to lenders. So this particular house, we bought it for 97.5. We put 75,000 into it, because again, it was gonna be to flip it. So we did a nicer level of rehab. We had about $8,000 of other costs. So our all-in costs are about $180,000. Well, I mean, rents, in that area aren't so high that 180,000 is an okay amount to be in, right? That's why I was like, yeah, it just really doesn't, it doesn't work. But I was just thinking by itself, it really doesn't work for rent, so we can't really hold it. However, now we have a value of 260,000. That was the appraised value that came in, 260. So we ended up creating about $80,000 in equity in that property. So we could have sold it, or we could hold it. Now, what had what had projected here was rents of fifteen hundred, right? We ended up renting it for eighteen hundred. So our cash flow, our cash flow is quite a bit higher uh, in all of this than than all the numbers that I've shown you here. But this demonstrates what what kind of the thought process was at the time. I'm like, look, the rents are fifteen hundred, our expenses are three fifty five. After the debt service, because it's a big loan, because it's a, we're in it for quite a bit, it's only going to cash flow fifty dollars a month. Well. $50 a month does not give me warm and fuzzies for anything. Cause if anything goes wrong, I mean, you're long, you're way negative, right? So this is why I was making the argument. Yeah, it doesn't really work. But what we ended up doing was finding out that yes, we could in fact put them all together and create a portfolio refinance. So we ended up working with Corvest and I did an interview with them back in November on the page. So you guys can always go back and watch that. Or if you want it, I'll let me know and I'll, I'll send you a link to it. But what we ended up doing was we took four door, four duplexes that were all fairly low in value. They were all like, you know, a hundred, 
120 to 130,000. Um, and we combine them with two single family homes that had like in the 200s thousands for value. Now the single family homes rented, one rented for 1275, the other one rented for 1825, right? And all the duplexes were averaging 15 to $1,700, the, the combination. So what they did is they took the total financials and they did a refinance based on kind of similar to the way they would look at an apartment building. What are the total rents coming in? What are the total expenses? And because the values were low on the duplexes, but the rents are really high, it completely offset the fact that the single family houses had lower rents compared to how high the values are. And it ended up coming out just like, it was gorgeous. So here's what the real numbers ended up being. We bought this, we bought the six properties that were 10 units for a total of 392,000. All right, we put $236,000 of renovation into them and we had $42,000 of other costs. Okay, so we're all in, call it $670,000, right? Those were our actual, actual expenses. When we had our um, appraisals done, the total value of the portfolio, now what they did is they appraised each property separately. And the total value of that portfolio ended up being just over a million dollars, all right? And we had paid 670,000 for it. So in the course of, and this, this whole thing was 16 months. It didn't take us 16 months to do all of it. It's just by the time we refinanced it, 16 months had passed. On average, our rehab timelines were, were eight weeks. So we buy something, eight weeks later it was performing. So within a 16 month period of time, we had got all these properties performing and at month 16 is when the refinance ended up going through. Um, and some we had just bought, you know, within six months before that. Anyway, so we ended up creating in that 16 month period of time, almost $350,000 of appreciation, of forced appreciation, just because we had bought fixers and done renovations on them, all right? Now the rents, now our actual rents, like I said, are quite a bit higher than this, but at the time, this is what we were projecting, the rents were 9360, we had expenses of 2600, so our net operating income was 6750, all right? Minus our debt service, we had about $2,500 a month of cash flow coming in, which projected out to be in about $30,000 annually. All right, so it's not like it's something that, that you're gonna be like, oh, okay, cool, I can retire now, but that 10 unit portfolio is something that is so within reach when you're just getting started. And that's what I really wanted to share that with you guys because a lot of people, it's like, it just, it's so much to go from never, never done anything to we buy a 150 unit apartment building. But what you can do is you can buy a du duplex, you can buy a fourplex, and you can buy a fixer and create appreciation. And then you can buy another one and another one and another one. And once you have at least five units, for us, it worked for 10. As long as you have at least five units, you can do this portfolio refinance, which allows you to have one payment a month, which that alone saved us so much time. Instead of, I would, before I had, you know, six different mortgage payments that I was making to the, the hard money lender, and I had to pay twice a year for the property taxes on the six different properties. And I had a monthly insurance payment on all these, plus our, all the other real estate that we're doing, right? But just, just with this, plus I had a property manager and all the different utility bills, like it was chaotic. Once we completed this refinance process, there was one payment and it's, it's principal, interest, taxes, and insurance, and that's just handled. So it's a big time saver. Anyway, so that's what I wanted to show you guys, just to, you know, when you're starting off, Start off where you can and start small. Once you start getting some traction, you'll see things start moving really quickly. And I know that, uh, that some of you have, have had conversations with me about, uh, you know, financing being an issue and getting stuck. And you just have to know there's a lot of different financing option, options out there um, that are creative financing. Sometimes people don't realize people in the hard money space do long-term 30-year loans. And yeah, it's going to be as cheap as it would if you went to a bank, we'll know, but a lot of times people in this space aren't, if you're not employed or if you're a business owner or you get full-time into real estate investing, you're not trying to get your money through a regular bank anymore, right? You go through more creative means like hard money lenders. So the rate's a little bit higher, but they have these great long-term programs. So anyway, that's all. Just wanted to share that with you guys. Um, I know we have um, a bunch of you guys are already signed up for the, uh, the, beta, the beta, beta group coaching program. And for those of you who aren't, um, but you're just like, what are you guys talking about? It's actually, we're calling it a mastermind because 
we're gonna have a group probably about 15 people total and we're just gonna be getting together every week for you know the next couple of months and it's gonna be all of me training training week by week the step-by-step -step that you're gonna be doing and then giving you activities you need to go and do so that the next week you're further along further along so that the idea is that while we're still coaching together you've closed on your first property and again it's just to create that momentum and to create that just that feeling of, oh my God, I did it. I did it. And not only did it, like I know how to do it. So I'm never going to be one, you guys will see my style is I'm never going to be one just to hand you a fish, but I will teach you how to fish so you can learn and build for your long-term future. So anyway, feel free to ask questions. I'll jump on the Facebook uh, page, answer questions that I see coming in and um, it's been fun. Love you guys. Have an amazing week and talk to you soon.